Hi, my name's Jonty. I'm a lawyer at Melbourne Law Studio, and today we're gonna to talk about something that causes people a lot of stress, and that's child custody arrangements. Now, this can be something that people really get concerned about, and that's understandable. Your children may be your life, and the thing is that when we're going through a separation, it can be difficult to think about what's in their best interest. A lot of the time, partners try to push and pull and figure out what's best for the kids. And sometimes you may have a good arrangement, but the issue is when both parties can't agree, what do we do? One of the most common ways to help the parties determine how they should spend time with their kids is a parenting plan. This can be written down and oftentimes it's the best way of doing it, mainly because that means that if there's any disputes, you can refer to it and suddenly the dispute is over. Now, sometimes we know that parenting plans may need to be changed and if you've got a good relationship with your partner, sometimes it's as easy as just sending a text and they'll make the arrangement for you. The thing is that when there are disputes, that's when things can get a bit more complicated. Oftentimes there's a dispute about which parent should decide on what school that the child should go to. The thing is that this is an equal decision. One of the main things that we tell people about is that both parties have an equal responsibility for their child. This doesn't necessarily equate to equal time and that's something that we have people coming in nearly every day speaking to us about. If you've got a good relationship with your ex-partner, it's best to start off with a parenting plan. This could be as easy as an Excel spreadsheet, you can write it in a Word document or even written down. We want to make sure that this has been formalised. Now, when we're talking about formalising parenting plans, that's when we start talking about what's called consent orders. We've got another video that talks about this, but in brief, these are orders that we then file with the court once they're agreed to between both parties. Now, if both parties can't agree, that's when the court may have to be involved and we may have to go to court about it. The thing is that this is all subjective. It's really important that you come and speak to us about it before you sign any agreements or anything like that because we wanna make sure that you and your kids have the best arrangement possible. Sometimes we have people coming in and they're talking about children orders and the thing is that they may have a six year old or even an eight year old and they're worried that the orders they're gonna be putting in now may be in place in 10 years or however long until they're an adult. No teenager wants to spend all of their time with their parents and the court understands that. They understand that circumstances change and especially if you're in agreement with your partner, it may be as easy as altering the original consent orders, which is what we call by consent. So both parties can agree to alter the orders. If you don't want to alter those orders, that's also something we can help with. Sometimes a certain party may want something that the other party doesn't want and we can always speak to you about that. Now, if both parties can't agree on what should happen with the children or the child, whichever it may be, that's when we may have to do what's called issuing proceedings. We can't actually go to court initially without going through mediation. There is an exception to this, and that's if you've been subjected to family violence of any sort. Now, family violence is something that is still very stigmatized in society, and the issue is that a lot of people don't understand what constitutes family violence. It doesn't have to be physical, it can can be mental, it can be verbal, especially if your partner is yelling at you, pressuring you, that doesn't mean that you have to agree to it. We are always here to speak to you about these sort of circumstances. We have a lot of clients who come and speak to us who don't feel like their voice has been heard. That's why we're here and that's why we're here to help you. We have people from all walks of life come to us about parenting arrangements, whether it's a same-sex arrangement, whether it's some other arrangement that you and your partner have, we're not here to judge you, we're here to help you. Now, when we're talking about children custody arrangements, that's also an area which we have a lot of questions about. Sometimes when there's younger children, it's best to have something which is like a two, two, three arrangement, which means there's two days with the parent, two days with another parent, and three days with the first parent. That's because often young children need to spend more time with each parent in consecutive days. The thing is that when kids get older, they may be able to go to a week on, week off arrangement, or whatever works for you and your partner. We know that sometimes you may be busy at work. You may have already got an agreement with your partner that for two months every year, you're absolutely flat out with something and they'll take the kids then and you can see them on weekends. It depends on your subjective circumstances and that's what we can always help you with here. We don't want to put you and your family into a box and just make sure that it's done and dusted for the sake of it being done and dusted. We're here to help you get the best result for you and your children. Sometimes you may feel pressured to go into an arrangement regarding your kids that you don't want to do. It may be from work, it may be from your ex-partner, it may be from a family member. We're never ever going to force you into something that you don't want to go into. We'll tell you about what's best for you and your children. We understand we're in a new world with regards to parenting. 
and all of the old rules have been thrown out the window. More time with a child does not mean that that parent gets to have more rights. And that's something we feel very strongly about. We act in the best interest of the children and you. We want to make sure that when you come and speak to us, that all of those misconceptions are cleared up. A really common question is, does my ex-partner have to pay child support? It depends on your own circumstances, and that's something we can speak to you about. You may be worried about not being able to support yourself or your child. These are all questions you can come and ask us without feeling any shame or guilt for wanting to know. One of the main questions you may have is regarding child support payments. This is determined by two things, on how much time you and your partner spend with the child or your children, as well as your respective incomes. It's not a hard and fast rule on who's going to get more, it's going to be subjective. It's determined by a government agency through a particular formula. It's quite common for people to come to us and say that their ex-partner is using time with their kids as a weapon when we're talking about property negotiations. This can be something really difficult to come and speak to anyone, let alone a stranger about, but rest assured that when you come and speak to us, we're not going to judge anything that's happened so far, and we're going to give you real and honest advice that can help you make it through such a turbulent time. Come and speak to us and we can let you know where to go next.